Hi everyone, this is Maverick Puan, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the suggested solution for 2020 A-Levels H2 Chemistry Paper 1, Question 19. Now question 19, when dichlorodifluoromethane CCl2F2 is released into the atmosphere, it accumulates in the upper part of the atmosphere where it reacts to form free radicals due to the action of ultraviolet light. One of the chain reactions which can occur is shown where x dot will represent the halogen radical. So the dot is to emphasize that it has an odd number of electrons. So the first step is x dot plus ozone to give me xo dot and o2. Then 2xo dot plus o2 to give me 2x dot plus 2o2. So effectively what is happening is my x radical or my halogen radical is regenerated, correct? So which statements are correct? Statement number one, F dot and dot C, Cl2F are the major free radical products made during the initiation step. Statement number two, the halogen radical acts as a catalyst in the breakdown of ozone. Statement number three, the halogen radical is formed during the termination step. So we want to run through each of these options eh, and see which statements are correct and we can answer this question 19. Now the topic tested in this question is under alkenes. More specifically, it is targeting our mechanism free radical substitution. So let's run through our statements one, two, three, and see which one of them are reasonable. Now statement number one, my fluorine radical and my C, Cl2F radical are the major products made during the initiation step. So is it reasonable or not reasonable? Now this statement number one is actually targeting the strength of your CX bond. So I have two different bonds here, CCL bond versus CF bond. And the one which is easier to break should be the one which is weaker with a lower bond energy. So if I compare CCL bond versus CF bond, CCL bond is longer and weaker because chlorine in terms of size, it is larger than fluorine. So CCL bond is longer and weaker, lower energy or less energy is required for me to break our CCL bond. Now some schools talk about the effectiveness of the orbital overlap. We will say that chlorine is larger in terms of size, so the orbital overlap between my chlorine and my carbon will not be so effective. So therefore, the conclusion is the same. Eh? The conclusion is the same. My CCL bond will be weaker, less energy is required for me to break that bond, and it should be the major process taking place because it is significantly easier for me to break my CCL bond and therefore I will have more of these CCL bonds broken as compared to CF bond. So this should be the major step when you shine UV light into this sample and the major radical products uh, that we should get should be these two radicals instead. We should be forming chlorine radical and this C, Cl, and F2 radical as major product. So we know that statement number one is not true. Next, how about statement number two? Now statement number two, we have our halogen radical acts as a catalyst in the breakdown of ozone. Now if you look at the two steps that is shown in the exercise, my halogen radical reacts with my ozone and then convert it to O2 and itself it forms this XO dot intermediate. Second step, this X O dot intermediate will be forming back our X dot. That means I'm regenerating my halogen radical. It comes back and it means that if it is regenerated, it should be the catalyst. Because catalyst will be regenerated at the end of the reaction and this radical can be used for subsequent reaction of ozone, breakdown ozone to O2 and the reaction will continue. So involving step number two, I think this is valid. Step number two is correct. How about step number three? Now step number three, it says that the halogen radical is formed during the termination step. Now termination step, what we have learned under free radical substitution, when we describe the mechanism, we know that termination step is when two radicals meet each other and they form a stable bond, covalent bond between them, and we form a stable product. So uh, termination step, usually is involving two radicals 
coming together to form a stable compound. The product shouldn't be a radical. And therefore, if statement 3 says that the halogen radical is formed during the termination step, then it shouldn't be correct. So statement number 3 is false. All right, so now we have gone through each of the statements. We know that statement number 1 is not true. Statement number 2 is true. Statement number 3 is not true. So once we have this, uh, we can run through our options A, B, C, D. My answer will be D. All right, so that was the discussion involving question 19. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.